I was teaching and I was apparently in this very privileged position. I was healthy, loved by my family in Italy with a good job and all that. But deep inside I had a very, um, like a, a real uh, sunken feeling that would not go away. So I tried with this, I tried with that, okay. One night uh, the college had invited a Bharatanatyam dancer so we had a whole program of Bharatanatyam and for three hours I was the happiest person on earth. I was like a kid. So I was in the front seat and the woman was performing and I was just clapping and laughing. I was so happy, mesmerized. So I went back to my home and um, did some searches on Bharatanatyam and Chidambaram came and then, you know, this and this and this and then all of a sudden Ananda Ashram came. Just one night Google search, or, or not Google, whatever it was. <laughs> but um, what drew me to, to it were two things. First of all, we couldn't come to the ashram right away. We had to do a correspondence course, the yoga step-by-step, -step, which would take at least a year and a half. And at that time, it was done, you know, they were shipping. It wasn't digital online. And, okay. So I liked that, being an academic. I was like, okay, there's some seriousness in this because they require a certain commitment. And then the second one is how in the ashram, all of the arts of Bharat, music, dance, and then the study of the Varnamalas and Sanskrit and so on, um, are brought together as a way of life with yoga. And so being a performer myself, I was really inclined. So I tried it. I had never practiced yoga before. I was 36, so I was really... But uh, it, it just, it just, it was just right. But now I know why he wants Wi-Fi in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so I finished the step-by-step -step and then I visited the ashram and I remember telling my parents I'm, I'm leaving this academic job to go study in an ashram in India and they had no idea what was going on. And now they're the biggest fan. They, uh, was he waiting at the gate? No, he was not. Uh, in fact, our connection, uh, it first began with Amaji for me. Uh, our connection wasn't, because Amaji at the time was Minakshi Devi Bhavanani. She was the one in charge of making sure the students were filling in the questionnaire and she would send us letters. And so it was through her. And I came to the ashram and I saw the sign, enter here only if you're happy, and I was not happy. I was coming from this, like really. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is not gonna go well. For the first three months, it was not, you know, cleaning of the toilet and then the deconstruction of the ego. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I kept having dreams of flying pizzas and all sorts of different, it was really not funny. Now I make fun of it, but it's not. Anyway, so with Amma, I really modeled, she was really, a, she's a model for me because she is um, really capable of embodying the teachings, especially in her capacity to have responsibility. She's able to respond to any particular situation. At the time, she was running the ashram, taking care of the kids and helping Dr. Nan. Anyway, and she never rushed. She doesn't rush anywhere, and I don't know how that was, I mean, I'm Italian, I move even when I sleep, I move. So I was like, this woman was just flying, but then also being super practical, and I, I, I realized that there was something there for me. So um, after about, I finished the six month training to become a teacher, and of course, immediately as soon as Dr. Nanda and Devasena uh, we're singing and performing and dancing and the kids and all of that. I knew this was good for me, but I had a lot of resistance, a lot of tamas, a lot, a lot of toxins and a lot of trauma. So it wasn't super good. But then I realized I wasn't ready to go back home and I applied to stay for another six months. And in the second training, something happened because Amaji realized how much I love singing. And she said, you know, Divya Priya was maybe six or five at the time. So we're talking 15, 16 years ago. And she said, Sangeeta, you're ready to take Carnatic music. We'll go, you'll go with Divya Priya. So there were all these kids, five, three, four years old, and me 
<laughs> sitting there. It was wonderful. And that's when it happened for me. That's when I was really able to, to enter a different perception, a different sensitivity, a different level of refinement through sound, through music. I remember the, our teacher used to spend maybe hours telling me, you don't pronounce this T, you pronounce it T. And to my Italian ear, it was just no different. So I was like, okay, so T. And she was like, no, 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 no. It's not T. It's, I'm, I'm making fun of myself. I'm not making fun of the language. I just couldn't understand. And so that's where it began. You know, I began to actually let go. We talked about today of let go of preconceived ideas and the stressors, and, and that's how I began to feel whole again and, and heal from that trauma, was to focus on the refinement of the music. So letting go found yeah. you your teacher. Exactly. That's, where, that's when there was a specific instance, and I'll close this here, but there was an instance where Dr. Nanda was singing with in Devasena. When I say Dr. Nanda, Devasena is always there anyway. <laughs> so, and, um, and they were singing and performing, and there was uh, this Bharatanatyam uh, theater piece that they were choreographing to prepare at Yoganjali Natyalayam with teenagers. So there was a lot of movement, a lot, a lot, a lot. And they had kindly invited me to accompany them as a musician in this performance, which is a great honor. So there was no score, there was just, you just listen and learn. So I was just, <laughs> you know, doing my best. And then I was preoccupied with something and, or just staring mesmerized at, at the dancers. And then I turned around and I saw something that I will never forget. You know the story of, of Krishna eating mud and his mother, you know, scolding Krishna. I oh, don't eat mud. And he opens the mouth and the whole universe is in the mouth. Yeah with the planets and so on. So I turned around and I saw that in Dr. Nanda's eyes. I saw the universe in his eyes. I didn't, it was really, it was a moment and I just, and that's when I knew. That's when I knew that that dimension is possible. He modeled it for me and at the time that's what I needed. I needed a way out, I need, you know, because my consciousness was there. So the relationship began and it has been tested many times. Yeah. By him. By him. <laughs> yeah. I know. And by Amaji. <laughs> and by Devasena. And by Divya Priya. And by Anandraj. 